this is Jessica from the Green Dream Project. I'm here with Peter and crew. And uh, we figured you might be getting a little sick of seeing Jim in all the videos. So we're going to be doing a, a little segment here. Um, our segment's going to be on all the plants and animals out here on the land. We thought you'd be kind of interested to see what kind of stuff's out here. So behind us here is a harvester ant nest. You can see this entire area that's bare. That's where the ants have cleared. Uh, there's 26 species of harvester ants and the ones here are red harvester ants. So as the name suggests, harvester ants will harvest their food they uh, eat seeds and dead insects. So now let's take a closer look at the harvester ant nest. So this is the harvester nest area. As you can see, the harvester ant nest has all these little pebbles all over. Um, the ants bring up all those pebbles along with a lot of other stuff under the ground. They've even found uh, artifacts like some ancient beads that the harvester ants brought up from their tunnels and chambers and kind of threw up here. Um, also, as you can see, this whole area is clear of all the vegetation. And they do that, um, but nobody really knows why they, why exactly they do that. Um, the whole nest is shaped in a big circle, basically. Um, a circular pattern. So, there's not a whole lot of them, but you can kind of see um, some little trails on the outside of the nest. And they kind of make the nest look like a sunburst almost, with all the little trails leading off. So, this is the harvester ant nest. Um, you can't really see any ants right now because they're all hibernating. Um, it's in the middle of February. It's kind of cold for ants to be running around. So you won't see any in this video. But we'll probably have an updated video once they all come out. So right now the, the nest is inactive, which is the only reason why we can be standing here. In the middle of summer, uh, the ants come out, they're all over the place. If you were standing here, you're going to get attacked. Every ant colony has different types of ants in it. Um, and there's a queen, of course. The queen makes all the baby ants. And some of those ants are workers and some of them are scouts. The scouts will go out in search of food and the workers take care of things inside the nest. Uh, the queen ant can live up to 20 years. All that time she's doing her thing making babies. And one interesting thing about the colony is that when it goes out in search of food it can travel, uh, those ants can travel up to 30 miles. So just based on our observation out here on our property, we estimate there could be well over a hundred different harvester ant nests. And in order to start building out here and kind of cohabitating with these creatures, uh, we're going to have to figure out how to deal with them and how to get along with them. So some of the challenges that we'll be facing, uh, one is obviously they, if you're standing on their nest or anywhere near their nest, they will sting you and bite you. Not just bite, but they can also sting. And the sting can be pretty painful from just one harvester ant. So if you can imagine like hundreds of them 
and they're all swarming you, that's probably not a good situation. <laughs> um, some other challenges, we're going to be growing our own food out here and the ants feed on plant seeds. So, uh, you know, they'll be carrying away our seeds um, that we're planting. Um, so we got to kind of overcome that challenge. Um, also, they like to clear away the vegetation around their nest. So uh, we got to kind of keep them out of the garden, make sure they're not chopping all our food down. <laughs> so another challenge we're kind of facing is um, not disturbing the nests because their population is in decline due to other ants like the fire ant and the Argentine ant who are an invasive species. And they're coming in and kind of taking all their food and resources and out-competing them. Um, also, you have the horned toad or the horned lizard that feeds off of the harvester ants. That's its only source of food. It doesn't really like any other ants. Um, it's got a real particular palate. <laughs> um, so we're kind of, we want to keep them uh, as many horned toads as we can. Because they also help keep the harvester ant nests in check. We've seen a couple on the on our property here, but we want to probably show you that in a future video. We'll show you the horn lizard. So, although we have these challenges with the ants, we want to recognize their potential benefits as well. And a big one is that they uh, improve the soil quality, and they're actually a major factor in, in improving soil quality out here because they do make the tunnels and they bring stuff up from deep under the ground, they aerate the soil, they allow better water drainage and water infiltration, and they help to fertilize the soil too by bringing in organic matter. So since they collect seeds and bring them back to their nest, they help to distribute the native seeds in the area, which is a benefit to the land. Um, like Peter was saying, they're an important source of food for the horned lizard, which is uh, an important part of the ecosystem out here, and we want to kind of keep that intact. And um, another thing about these ants um, which is unusual is we don't have to really worry about them coming indoors like some of the smaller ants will to uh, kind of try to find food. They don't do that at all unless you kind of track them in on your shoes or clothes. So that's a good thing. So we did a little research and we've estimated that there's about probably over a hundred nests just on the 40 acres of property here. Um, so we kind of documented that so we have a good number and we could kind of see uh, all our, see that what, how many nests are on here and what we can do uh, to interact with them. So now our task is to try to figure out uh, some ways to interact with the ants in a, in a good way where we can grow our food and they can do their thing. So we're coming up with some ideas on maybe how to avoid them, on how to repel them or get them to move to a different area, or maybe setting up uh, certain barriers. So we're gonna be kind of experimenting with that and I'm sure you're gonna see that in a future video update that we do and so I guess that's it for now and we'll have more on the native plants and animals in, in this area in future videos so thanks for watching <laughs>